So tell us a little bit more about um, that sort of that kind of period. What happened? Well, you know, it was just a really prior to the war with with Ukraine, it would kind of ebb and flow. I mean, um, it was really bad under President Medvedev. Um, it seems like Putin would, you know, OK some of it, but some of it kind of, you know, there were there were periods where not much happened. And then certainly with the war with Ukraine um, kicked up that took a back seat to all of that. Um, but, you know, I mean, the damage is done. They had seized loads of places. And here's something that a lot of people don't realize. Um, the religious freedom that they have is not the same as the religious freedom that we have in the United States, as an example. No, it's not. Um, we also have freedom of assembly. They do not. So there were plenty of times where we would have we would go and uh, our people would go and buy land, uh, put a church on private property and pay for the whole thing, build the whole thing. Yeah. But you can't actually have a um, you can't actually have religious services there if you're not registered with the government. And part of the threat has been uh, throughout the years is that they would pull our registration um, as a religious order. And then you can't go and do that. Even though you're on private property, you can't go and hold a religious service there. They can actually come in, arrest everyone, shut you down, and so forth, even though you're on private property. So, you know, that's – so, you know, our facilities there have been greatly compromised since then. Um, it's really been difficult for us to grow. Uh, we had about 100 or so parishes that had been in the catacombs and had remained in the catacombs for fear of just this sort of thing. Um, and so now we don't know, uh, you know, and and only certain bishops on the synod of Ro Roak even knew where they were. Um, yeah, and so, that, that, that's, that's, back, that's actually by design. Right. Uh, what a lot of people don't know about uh, Roak is that they've always had kind of uh, catacomb bishops um, who basically shepherded just for catacomb communities. That was their primary purpose. So you had uh, Archbishop Seraphim of Suhimi, God rest his soul, Archbishop Anthony of Uransk, God rest his soul for months. I understood when I was there, they were uh, already training uh, Bishop Irenark to handle those catacomb communities. Um, and so, you know, it's the point is that there is a there is a kind of a catacomb infrastructure that kind of operates as kind of a church within the church in Roak. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's a kind of um, it's kind of, yeah because there they they there was always a large group in Roak that kind of just didn't trust the government at all, and this kind of proves why, um, <laughs> because uh, you know ultimately they they were proven right that you know given the chance. Ooh. Moscow would just try to take their buildings, take the everything they have, uh, which they did do in in many cases. Uh, one thing I will note uh, for those who have not tried this, do remember that each country's uh, Wikipedia, as much as I don't like it, uh, Wikipedia as an organization, try to go to Russian Wikipedia and look up the Russian Orthodox Autonomous Church. They're actually quite um, open and honest about trying to liquidate the uh the ROAC and how you know how successful or not successful they've been so far uh which is it's it's gross but if you want to see the truth i'm just saying if you go to russia wikipedia it's like they're they're so honest about it compared to here right right and and, and when they couldn't steal a church they would come in and take relics that were you know, of a, of a huge, you know, there, there had several relics of, of some very famous saints mm -hmm. uh, in Russian history there in Suzdal. And we had them in our churches. Uh, and so when they couldn't seize a church, they would come in and want to seize the relics, which they did um, after, you know, extremely long and very costly court battles. Um, and then they would, you know, they would, they would show up and they would say, we're going to take them. Um, I remember one time that they showed up in Metropolitan Theodore, um, who's our who's our second and current hierarch. Um, they showed up and, you know, this policewoman in just, you know, a skirt and so forth shows up into the church while they're doing services. And she says, OK, well, we need you to give us these relics that you've lost in the court battle. And he says, 
she says she just hands him like a garbage bag and says you put them in there and he says i'm not doing that you want to do that go over there and do that go ahead go they're, they're right over there go go ahead and do it yourself <laughs> they decided wow. not to do it uh but you know a couple year like a year or so later they came in and did it while you know he was laying on the floor in front of him so they had to step over him or step on him to do it um but um yeah i mean they literally would do anything to shut us down um at every turn which is so funny because the the you know rocor clergy in the united states that i've talked to kind of you know they they always view it as like i don't even know anything about this and then when you tell them a little bit about it, they're like, oh, well, I don't, well, I don't care about you. I don't, you know, you're, you're insignificant. Yeah. You don't matter. Well, well, then why are you seizing our churches left and right? You know, like if you, if you think that this is just uh, not a big deal and that you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think, oh, you're very small and insignificant. Okay. Well, then why are you having to seize our churches? Why take our churches? Exactly. Away? Why take our relics away? Why, you know, in, why, why keep, you know, I mean, they put uh, Metropolitan Valentin in jail. They smeared him in public. They, you know, tried to frame him as a as a pedophile. They put him on trial, which he was found innocent of. They had to retract all of that. They had to put it into paper. Um, you know, so I mean, one of the one of the biggest things I saw, in, one of the biggest ironies I saw when I was in Seussville was that one of the kids who um, had supposedly accused Metropolitan Valentin admitted that the police forced him to. But even more so striking was the fact that he was serving in the altar as an altar server, as one of the altar servers in church. Um, so that was just mind blowing. Um, the level of government mendacity combined with the Moscow Patriarch, it's just, you know, evil. Absolutely. So as it stands today, we, you know, our churches and I mean, well, a couple of things have hit, you know, obviously losing all of those churches was uh, a big, devastating. you know, devastating, you know, and it, and it can make a lot of people who were kind of coming there and then they just kind of think, ah, oh, just, I'm not in for this kind of a fight. So some, some of those folks walk away. Um, and then obviously COVID and the war in Ukraine has been extremely detrimental uh, to the Russian populace. Um, you know, our people are, we're already very poor for the most part. Um, and, you know, this has just been devastating and you know, COVID hit and they were, you know, on lockdown and couldn't go to church. And so now it's, you know, our attendance at churches is much smaller than it used to be, especially prior to COVID. Um, and so we're trying to claw our way back, you know, obviously with always that fear of, well, if we get, if we get too, uh, too far, you know, back to where we were before, you know, the, the, the MP with the, with the help of the government is just going to come and hammer us back down into the ground. So um, there's a, there's a good bit of, um, you know, disheartment, you know, among the, the, the synod of bishops and we're trying the best we can. I mean, we're, we're, we're still doing it. We're still saying our prayers. There's still services going on. Um, uh, if I remember but, correctly, Archbishop okay. Andrea is banned from Russia, isn't he? Yes. Last time he went uh, several years ago, uh, they held him at the airport for 24 hours, and then he was deported. He is um, on the list of extremists, which is um, – they kind of use that word for the way we might, like, refer to him. Terrorists. Yeah, he's an extremist, a troublemaker. Uh, and so – He's can't can't even go to Russia to meet with the synod of bishops. They have to they have to make other arrangements. It's really sad. Really it sad. Is, it truly is. Yeah. So um, so the most part for of our uh, of Roax growth um, in the United States here it's pretty anemic. Um, we've had we've had uh, very little growth. Lots of people have come to us, but then you start digging, and you know, unfortunately, some of those people are not very high quality people so we ended up not doing anything with that but we have a large large group of people in in um, eastern europe um and in uganda so that's kind of where things are growing more much more so in in africa and um in um in eastern europe and in fact 